Hello everyone. Uh, in today's session of overview and integration of cellular metabolism, uh, we will discuss glycolysis, alcohol and lactic acid fermentation. Now, in the previous class, we already have discussed the digestion and absorption of carbohydrate. In this class, we will discuss different concepts of glycolysis like definition of glycolysis that is what is glycolysis, then the sites of glycolysis, different phases of glycolysis, uh, basic biochemical reactions including reversible, irreversible and rate limiting steps of glycolysis and also different inhibitors, then clinical and applied aspects related to this specific metabolic pathway. Okay. So, uh, in the previous class, you have already uh, known that carbohydrate are absorbed in the simpler form and enters circulation. In the circulation, the major metabolite of carbohydrate is definitely glucose. Now, glucose enters inside the cell through different glucose transporters. See, these are the glucose transporters. Now, after entering into the cell, glucose can undergo uh, different biochemical reaction. It is not only the source of energy, it is also used as precursor for different intermediate for different other biochemical reaction. Now, here we will discuss how glucose is entering glycolysis. Definitely, it forms glucose 6-phosphate. Now, glucose 6-phosphate can once again undergo uh, glycolysis as well as glycogenesis that is glycogen formation and also pentose phosphate pathway. Here we will discuss glycolysis specifically. Now, uh, what is glycolysis? Basically, glycolysis this term is derived from Greek words. One is glykis which means sweet or sugar and the other one is lysis, pleating. So, uh, this is basically the splitting of glucose glycolysis. Now, it is also known with the name of the discoverers Emden, Meyerhoff and Parnes. So, it is also known as EMP pathway. Now, in glycolysis what is actually happening? It is that metabolic pathway where one molecule of glucose is degraded by sequential enzyme catalyzed reactions to yield pyruvate, a 3 carbon compound pyruvate is generated by splitting glucose. Now, during this sequential reaction some free energy are released and those free energies are stored in the form of ATP and NADH. So, basically uh, glycolysis is splitting of glucose to form pyruvate as well as production of ATP and NADH. Now, where glycolysis occurs? Glycolysis is basically an universal central pathway of glucose metabolism present almost in every cell. Not only that, this is the largest flux of carbon. Now, there are multiple cells or tissues like erythrocyte RBC renal medulla, brain, sperm cells, these cells, these tissues are solely dependent on glycolysis for the production for the supply of energy and the enzymes which are required for glycolysis are present in cytosol. So, basically glycolysis is a uh, cytosolic metabolic pathway. Now, there are two phases of glycolysis, one is preparatory phase, another is payoff phase. Now, let us see what happens in these phases. Now, in preparatory phase, these are the reactions. What happens? First, the glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. So, basically we call this step as activation of glucose. Now, just like other monosaccharides like fructose, galactose, glucose also needs to be activated to enter the metabolic pathway and how this activation occurs by phosphorylation. Phosphorylation with the help of 
hexokinase sometimes glucokinase as well. Now, uh, these two enzymes either of the one actually converts glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. This is the first priming reaction and here the phosphate donor is definitely ATP. Now, glucose 6 phosphate next is converted to fructose 6 phosphate. This is an isomerization reaction. So, the enzyme here is phosphohexose isomerase. Next, fructose 6 phosphate once again undergo another priming reaction by phosphorylation with the help of the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1. Now, this enzyme is very important, this uh, metabolic reaction is very important. Now, you can see that those two phosphorylation reaction like glucose to glucose 6 phosphate as well as fructose to fructose to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate, these two reactions are irreversible reaction whereas isomerization is a reversible one. Now, formation of fructose bis, uh, 1 6 bisphosphate is the committed pathway for glycolysis. Why? See, uh, these intermediates from glucose like glucose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 phosphate, they can enter or undergo various other biochemical reaction, they can enter in different other metabolic pathway other than glycolysis, but formation of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is the targeted step. This molecule can only enter glycolysis. So, this is the uh, second priming reaction as well as the committed steps for glycolysis, step for glycolysis and also the rate limiting step of glycolysis. Okay. So, there is formation of fructose 1, 6, bisphosphate. Once again, the phosphate, phosphate group donor is ATP. Next, fructose 1, 6, bisphosphate is split to two different uh, three carbon molecule. One is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, another is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, this is the step based on which glycolysis is named. Lysis is the splitting. Here the splitting is, splitting has happened, yeah. So, this splitting occurs with the, in, with the help of the enzyme aldolase, this is basically aldolase A. Now, these two, three carbon molecule are interconvertible, but uh, in normal intracellular condition, mostly dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, the enzyme is triose phosphate isomerase. So, what we can see at the end of the preparatory phase, uh, there are two molecules of ATP, there are two molecules of ATP which are utilized, one is here, another is here and those energy free, en those energies are stored as free energy in the intermediates and also there is formation of a common product glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, basically there are two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate formed at the end of preparatory phase of glycolysis. Now, payoff phase is how these stored energy in the intermediate uh, those uh, free energy how they are helping to form other uh, molecules which finally can be utilized in energy formation in electron transport chain as well as substrate level phosphorylation. Let us see. So, in payoff phase we are having two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Now, both the molecules undergo same type of processing. Now, what happens? First, the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate undergo oxidation and phosphorylation. Now, remember in this step of phosphorylation, the uh, ATP is not utilized, ATP is not the phosphate donor, rather, inorganic phosphate is used here. And also, because there is oxidation, so basically there is dehydrogenation and NAD is converted to NADH here and the enzyme definitely here is a dehydrogenase glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. So, there is formation of 
1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, 2 molecules. Remember, there are 2 molecules every time. Now, from this 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, a substrate level phosphorylation occurs. So, what is substrate level phosphorylation? Here, the phosphate donor to ADP is not ATP, rather, it is a substrate which is giving off the phosphate group. So, here 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, one of the phosphate group is donated to ADP to form ATP and there is formation of 3 phosphoglycerate and the enzyme here is kinase, phosphoglycerate kinase. Next, there is uh, phosph phosphate group shifting from 3 to 2 position of carbon forming 2 phosphoglycerate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. Now, this 2 phosphoglycerate undergoes dehydration or hydrolysis actually with formation of phosphenol pyruvate with the help of the enzyme enolase. Now, this enzyme enolase can be inhibited by fluoride. Fluoride inhibit the enzyme enolase. What is the importance? We will discuss it later. Now, phosphenol pyruvate then undergo another substrate level phosphorylation and forms pyruvate. Again, because there is substrate level phosphorylation, there is formation of ATP from ADP and the enzyme is another kinase which is pyruvate kinase. Now, this is the payoff phase where we can see there is formation of NADH here, then there is formation of ATP at substrate level phosphorylation here and here. So, this is the payoff phase where the stored energy in the intermediate are finally giving rise, uh, uh, finally producing NADH as well as ATPs. Now, what is the fate of this pyruvate finally? Now, pyruvate can be processed aerobically as well as anaerobically. In most of the cells, most of the aerobic cells, pyruvate enters TCA cycle or citric acid cycle, it is also known as citric acid cycle, where different reducing equivalent in the form of NADH or FADH to a form and they enter electron transport chain and finally, they are oxidized by oxidative phosphorylation forming ATP and also regenerating NAD that is the oxidized form. So, NAD is formed at the end of the uh, electron transport chain once again it is regenerated. But and that regenerated NAD can once again be utilized in glycolysis. But in case of anaerobic glycolysis where oxygen supply is low in those tissues or in those organisms who undergo anaerobic metabolism, their uh, regeneration of uh, NAD cannot be done because there is no electron transport chain. So, there is no oxidative phosphorylation, there is no regeneration of NAD. Then uh, how this NAD can be replenished. So, in those organisms or in those tissues where there is anaerobic metabolism is occurring, there pyruvate is converted to lactate with the help of the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase and there NADH is converted to NAD and this NAD can be reutilized in glycolysis. So, basically the flux of NAD is maintained in anaerobic glycolysis by forming lactate. Now, lactate uh, 
uh, specifically does not have any metabolic role in case of glycolysis rather accumulation of excess lactate can cause muscle fatigue. as well as acidosis lactic acid accumulation. So, there can be acidosis low pH. So, excess lactic acid accumulation can cause lactic acid with all these symptoms. So, basically anaerobic glycolysis there is formation of lactate and aerobic glycolysis there is formation of pyruvate and that pyruvate enters TCA cycle and is utilized in uh, electron transport chain for formation of ATP. Now, um, as we have discussed that in aerobic condition pyruvate forming acetyl coenzyme A can enter TCA cycle or citric acid cycle, but in case of anaerobic condition or hypoxic condition it can form lactate in different organisms. It can also form alcohol that is alcohol fermentation in hypoxic or anaerobic condition different organisms um, pyruvate can be converted to ethanol and releases carbon dioxide in different organism and those are utilized metabolically. So, that is alcohol fermentation process. So, this is the overall balance sheet of glycolysis here each molecule of glucose gives rise to two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and they and the whole process undergo 10 specific reaction where glucose forms two molecules of pyruvate, 4 ATP investing 2 ATP, investing 2 ATP one inorganic uh, phosphate is there to uh, actually two for two molecules of pyruvate and then there is formation of NADH as well as ADP. Now, if you simplify the reaction we can see there is investment of glucose which finally forms two molecules of pyruvate from NAD there is formation of NADH from inorganic phosphate and ADP finally there is formation of ATP and uh, further water formation, water molecule formation. So, this is the final balance sheet of glycolysis. Now, let us see what is the net ATP production at the end of glycolysis. So, uh, this is the step here in uh, payoff phase of glycolysis, this is the payoff phase of glycolysis. Here you can see for formation of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate there is 2 molecules of NADH because there are 2 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. From these 2 molecules of NADH when this NADH is basically oxidized there is energy production which is equivalent to 3 molecules of ATP. as well as there are substrate level phosphorylation from where we are getting 2 molecules of ATP and also another level of substrate level phosphorylation there are 2 molecules of ATP. Now, 3 ATP is produced from 1 molecule of NADH. So, basically there is 6 molecules of ATP because you remember there are 2 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate from there 2 NADH is produced each NADH is contributing in formation of 3 molecules of ATP. So, there are 6 ATPs. So, 6 ATP, but remember in preparatory phase there is investment of 2 ATP molecule, 2 ATP molecule. So, 2 ATP are utilized. So, at the end of glycolysis what we are getting 6 plus 2 plus 2 minus 2. So, there are 8 ATP molecules are formed at the end of glycolysis. Now, once again uh, it has been seen that the energy is not uh, 
specifically um, two molecule uh, sorry three molecules of ATP on oxidation of NADH it is actually 2.5 the energy is equivalent to uh, 2.5 molecules of ATP. So, if we recalculate it we will see that there are 5 molecules of ATP from NADH then 4 molecules from substrate level phosphorylation of ATP and 2 molecules of ATP are invested in preparatory phase. So, basically there are 7 molecules of ATP at the end of glycolysis. So, remember this is the old calculation, this is the newer one where at the end of glycolysis there is formation of 7 molecules of ATP. Now, what are the applied importance and clinical aspects of glycolysis? Now, remember as we have discussed that the enzyme enolase is inhibited by fluoride. Now, what is the uh, clinical utilization of this phenomena? Now, when we collect blood for estimation of blood glucose, in blood there are multiple molecules, molecules of RBCs. Now, RBC if you do remember is solely dependent on glycolysis for the provision of metabolic energy. Now, because there is uh, only very low amount of ATP form in uh, glycolysis. So, there is excessive utilization of glucose for provision of ATP. Now, what happens in the stored blood in the collected blood which is which have been collected for estimation of blood glucose if that blood is kept for long time what happens the RBCs is present in the blood they utilize glucose for uh, their uh, energy requirement. Now, what will happen the content of glucose will be reduced in blood sample. Now, to stop that what we will do we add fluoride in the vials with the anticoagulants we add sodium fluoride. Now, that sodium fluoride actually inhibit enolase. So, basically enolase is in uh, in, and enolase is inhibited by sodium fluoride which helps to keep the blood glucose content in uh, the amount as it is. So, this is one clinical aspect. Next, pyruvate kinase deficiency causes hemolytic anemia. Now, remember once again that is uh, that this concept is once again with regard to RBCs. Now, in RBCs if there is pyruvate kinase deficiency what will happen definitely ATP production will not be there. Now, RBC has sodium potassium ATPase pump. Now, this sodium potassium ATPase pump is actually maintaining the shape as well as the uh, uh, as well as the lifespan of RBC. So, if the sodium potassium ATPase pump is not acting properly due to the absence or deficiency of ATP what will happen RBC will swells up and will burst that will cause hemolytic anemia. Then another concept that is lactic acidosis is precipitated by anoxia or hypoxia as we have already discussed there is formation of lactate from pyruvate in case of anaerobic glycolysis. Now, if there is continuous or severe hypoxia there will be formation of excessive amount of lactate and that will cause lactic acidosis. So, these are the different clinical aspects or applied aspects of glycolysis. So, at the end of this session these are the key points that glycolysis is the formation of pyruvate by splitting glucose this is a uh, 6 carbon compound which has been split off to form pyruvate with simultaneous production of ATP as well as NADH and this NADH is finally utilized to form uh, ATP after entering into the uh, electron transport chain. And then glycolysis can be aerobic 
by formation of pyruvate which enters once again TCA cycle 2 electron transport chain or it can be anaerobic which forms lactate for regeneration of NAD at the end of the aerobic glycolysis phase there is production of 8 ATP rather 7 ATP this is the recent concept at the end of glycolysis there is production of 7 ATP molecules. So, these are all for today. Thank you.